Alright friends, we're going to get started making a maze game on Replit. It's going to be a Python maze game. So here's an example that I have. I'll make the code minimal here. So in this maze game, we'll use W, S, A, or D to move. So I'll type W to go up. And you can see as I go up, it redraws the map and increases like kind of what you can see as far as history is concerned. So my player is a capital A. I just chose that because it kind of made sense. And you see I have hit points, and the hit points change as I like hit walls or whatever. And I can't walk through walls. That's a door. We'll make we'll make a door later. Um, or the ability to walk the open and closed doors and unlock doors and stuff like that later. So that's the basic game we're going to create. Um, that'll be what we do in this video. In the next video, uh, we'll add the ability to unlock doors and pick things up. And then we'll have another video after that where we'll have the ability to spawn and fight mobs. So I'm going to go to create. I'm going to choose Python. And I'm going to call mine maze uh, underscore ex. You can call yours whatever you want. Okay, so I don't really care about the file section right now. So I'm just going to minimize that. And I don't care about that on the right either. So I'm going to minimize that as well for now. Okay, so one of the first things I want to do for this is um, give our player hit points um, or health. So I'm going to make that random um, within a, a range of numbers so that it's not always the same. It's just kind of more fun to me to be random. So at the top, I'm going to type import random and um, I always like to put my imports at the top. Seems like a best practice to me. And I'll, I'm going to make a variable. I'll call it player health. Let's call it player hit points, HP. And I'll set that equal to a random integer. So random period, R-A-N-D-I-N-T, not it, int, integer. And then uh, I'm going to make mine between 120 and 200. That seems like a reasonable amount. And I just use the arrow key to go to the end of the line and press enter. That's what I recommend you do so that, um, you know, you, you always have your cursor in the right place. It's just a habit to get into. Okay, so the player's health is going to increase over time if they're not injured. And so I want to remember what their maximum health is because it's going to be different. I can't just hard code it. So I'm going to make a max hit points, max HP, and I'm going to set that equal to player HP. So next I'm going to choose the location for my player. That's where they're going to start. This will make sense in a second. And I'm going to set that to be 81. Finally, during gameplay, the player is going to or is going to see messages, and for convenience, I'm going to make my message now. I'm just going to set it to be blank. Again, I'm going to arrow over and go down. Okay, now I'm going to make my maze, and it's going to be a list. Um, so I'm going to say maze equals, and then a square brace over there by the enter key. Then I'm going to start drawing my maze. So my maze is going to look like this. It's going to be quote with a hashtag in the middle. I'm going to arrow over to the right put a comma. Space, quote, hashtag, arrow right, comma. Again and again, 10 times. Making sure that I don't forget, get careless, and forget a comma or something like that. Let's see where I'm at here. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I need three more. So comma, one, two, three. And I'm going to put a comma at the end of this line as well. So I'm going to do 10 lines of these. So it should be 10 here. I'll just count one more time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Cool. So now I'm going to highlight this line and I'm going to copy it 
by uh, you can use Control C or the copy you know function on there. And I'm going to press Enter here, and I'm just going to space over until I'm in line with the quote from the previous line, and then I'm going to press Control V to paste. And I'm going to do this. That so that's two. So here's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Right. So let's just count that again. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Great. Okay. So there's my maze. I'm going to get rid of that last comma. And my maze obviously is all filled in. So now I'm going to draw open spaces in there for the player to kind of walk in. So this is spot 81. So uh, in other words, here is 1 and here is 99. So spot 81 is going to be in the eighth row down and in the second, second section. So now I'm just going to highlight this, press space once, and I'm going to hollow out a you know, a maze for my player to play in. And you can make it whatever shape you want. Eh. Whatever. Um, you know, you could try to make like rooms or whatever. Uh, you can make them go on like kind of a squirrely path. Whatever makes sense to you. You can have, you know, big open spaces, like we can make big open rooms. Or smaller rooms. That was in the wrong spot. And finally, I'm just keeping track of the symmetry of everything. Um, so just looking to see if anything is, looks off, because that'll help you kind of help your eye pick it up really quickly. And let's make another way to go here. And later on, we might add like a, a way to go from like maze to maze, like maybe like a door or a portal that will go someplace else. Maybe that'll be down there. Okay, cool. So there's my maze. Uh, so I'm going to go to the end of my list, and I'm just going to press Enter. Uh, and then I'm going to backspace all the way to the left side. So I'm in line with this line. It's very important that I'm all the way to the far left. So now I want to create a blank maze for history. So in other words, the player is never going to see this maze that's, that's in front of them. So I want to make a blank one, and we're going to fill that in as the player moves through the maze. And I'm going to call this maze history, because that kind of makes sense to me. And it's also going to be a list. So it's going to be square braces, like over by the enter key. But this one's going to be blank inside. So it's going to be, I hit quote, doesn't matter if it's a single or a double, and as long as they match. And now I'm going to put one single space in between. And now I'm going to arrow over the space bar again, and I'm going to type 4, I, in, range. And now my maze is 100. Um, places and size. So I'm going to type 100. And so what this is going to do, it's going to make a list that's just got 100 blanks in it. That's all it's going to do. It's going to do, I is going to be the count. So it's going to start at zero and it's going to go 100 times. So to 99. Okay, great. So now down a couple more lines. That's my history. And now I'm going to make a function that's going to draw a picture of the maze as uh, as the players in it. So I'm going to call that picture because that makes sense. So again, all the way to the left, def for defines because I'm defining a new function, picture, and then uh, parenthesis. And this picture function is going to take this uh, variable, this 81 number. So I'm going to say location, like that. And now arrow over and a colon, not a semicolon, not a semicolon like that, a colon. When I press enter, it should space over automatically two spaces. That's what I'm looking for. And I'm just going to hit enter one more time, give myself a little bit of white space. And now we're going to say, okay, history at location, 
oh, let me explain what I'm doing here. Here, I'm just finished typing this. Minus 11. So what I'm doing here is, if you can imagine the player is here, this is where they're going to start. So I want to draw these nine boxes, these nine places around the player. So if this is where we are, location 81, this would be 80, 89, 88, 87, and so on, all the way down to here. This is 11 spaces before it, 11 previous. The number is 11 less. So our history location is location, uh, for this spot right here, is location minus 11, so 81 minus 11. And we're going to set that equal to whatever happens to be at the maze in that same spot. So the left is going to look like the right. It's probably a better way to do this. I don't know. I couldn't think of a way that was kind of worth the effort. But So we're going to do that for location minus 11. That'll be right here. Location minus 10, right here. Location minus 9, right here. Location minus 1. That's one less than the person. And then it's going to be kind of the opposite. So location plus 1, location plus 10, location plus, wait, plus 1, plus 9, plus 10, plus 11. So that's the way that's going to go down. So here I am. I'm going to do this, um, like, I don't know, seven times. <laughs> so let's get typing. location minus 10 okay. equals maze same place I'm not going to stop talking because it's a lot to say I should tell you a joke right now you could copy and paste this too I find it's almost as fast just to type it even with my slow and slow typing ability I guess I should like copy at least the word location because I write that so much now they don't have to be so perfectly symmetrical like I'm making them I just like the way it looks um, it helps me again just like in the maze it helps my eye kind of keep everything you know where it needs to be uh, so one more time history minus one this time uh oh i put a squirrely <laughs> squirrel i put a um curly brace in there by accident that's whoopsie fix that okay great so that's where um everything behind or above my player will be and now i need to put the player in so the player's gonna be history location it's a curly brace again Uh, with, with no math, and that's going to be set to be equal to uh, capital A. I, I tried to do this uh, with an icon, and it didn't work for me. I couldn't get the icons to play on Replit, so whatever. I'll stick with this. You're welcome to change it and make it something else if you want to try. Um, okay, so now this is going to be kind of the mirror image of that. Now I'm just going to do the same thing, but plus 1, um, and then plus 9, plus 10, plus 11. It's probably a great place for me to copy and paste. See, I'm making mistakes. Okay, so this needs to be a 9. It's not a 0, a 9. And this needs to be a 10, not an 11. This is so too easy, and my mind's wandering, I guess. Okay, so if you're having a hard time following all that, just pause and, and copy, copy this in there. Um, but it should be the same numbers on each line. So 11, 10, 10, 9, 9, 1, 1, nothing. And then plus 1, plus 9, plus 10, plus 11. Okay, so again, what this is doing is mapping whatever happens to be here to the history. So it's re redrawing the history, if you will. Um, because the history is actually what's going to print out and show us where we were.
Okay, so now we need to actually print out the history. So again, staying two spaces over from the far left, I'm going to make a couple of temporary variables for math. I'm going to call them just A and B. Uh, so A is going to be 0 and B is going to be 10. And this is going to help us to print this out line by line because uh, here, let's just, let me show you what I mean. Don't do this part. Um, I'm going to print this out and show you what I mean. So I'm going to, I'm going to just go down and I'm going to say print parenthesis history. So again, don't, don't bother with this history and, um, I'm going to go down here and I'm going to say picture location. And when I run this, you, you should see, hopefully we won't have any errors, and you should see that it's a little weird. Okay, so when I run it, you see it's just kind of not, it doesn't make any much sense. These are all just kind of off in space players there, the stuff's there, no errors, that's good, but it doesn't print in a pretty way that I wanted to. I wanted to print in a way that looks like this picture, the maze. And so that's what this is all about. So what I'm doing here with the A and B is I'm going to make a, a loop. I'm going to say four, I in range again, uh, 10 this time, not 100, because I want to print this line by line. That's my goal here. So 10 in parentheses and then a colon. I'm going to print, I'm going to press enter. Now I'm two more spaces to the right. I'm going to print the first 10, um, the first 10 items in my history list. And I'm going to do that by using the join command. So I'm going to put just, an, just two quotes, no space in between. I'm going to use the arrow because that go over because it automatically put the second quote in. And then a period. And then the word join, J-O-I-N. And then what we're joining, which is history. And finally, the location of the history that I want to join. And that's what the A and B is all about. So it's going to be A colon B. So I'm going to go from 0 in my list here to 10. OK, so now I'm going to press Enter. And I'm just going to increment A and B. So I'm going to say A uh, plus equals 10. And plus equals is just a shorthand way to say add 10 to whatever it used to be. It doesn't care what it, wa what it was. It just adds 10 to it. So next time around, A is going to be 10 and B is going to be 20. And then the next time, A will be 20, B will be 30. And when I run it, it should look better. It doesn't look better. <laughs> What's the problem? I messed up. I made a problem. Oh, I didn't make a problem. I, I shouldn't print this. It's printing here. Just get rid of that. Bye. That was my bad. That's what happens when I go off script. Bam. So there's my player. Just like we were hoping to see it. Okay, cool. So that worked. I really thought I messed up. I was super confused. I was like, no. No, this is going to take forever now. Okay. So um, that's it. So now we have a maze. So let's get our basic gameplay underway. And then um, and then we'll call it quits for this video. So the, our gameplay is going to be in a while true loop. So I'm going to say while, capital T true, and then a colon. And when I press enter, it's going to space over two spaces. By the way, the, the W and while, again, is all the way to the left. I had to make that to the left. I didn't say that but I had to make that all the way to the left. So notice the spacing. It's very important. This is two over for this line, all this, and this is two more over. This is back all the way to the left. Okay, so the first thing I want to do, because this is going to happen again and again and again, the first thing I'm going to want to do is clear the screen. And so I'm going to do that by typing print parenthesis and then a special escape sequence. So um, I think this is this is kind of strange for me. Um, they're basically it's an escape sequence. It's a it's an ASCII number or symbol that will basically cause the screen to clear. Um, 
that's the best explanation I have for this. I think I have it right, J. Quote. And then, okay, so this is, this is all super weird. Oh, I forgot a, a quote over here. Sorry about that. Okay, so that should be the right thing. Um, so the, these are two different characters. I think this is control and whatever that is. Basically, it, it clears the screen. Okay, so now we're going to have the picture location, which needs to be spaced over. So we're going to run that. Oops. I hit the delete button to bring it back. Whatever you got to do to get that in the right spot. So that'll print our, or that'll call that, which will print our picture, and then come back. And then next I'm going to press enter again, and I'm going to print some lines. I could do this in a loop. Um, I could probably write something fancy and, you know, make it count how wide, how many characters wide the screen is or something like that, but I'm not going to bother. And again, every time I come to the end of the line and I press enter, um, it's not absolutely critical that you do it that way, but I like it. It helps me to not mess up and you know, accidentally have my spacing wrong. Okay, finally, so next I'm going to print the message. So right now there's no message. And then I'm going to put what the hit points are. So I'll print the hit points. So I'll say your, oops, quote. Your hit points are, and then I'm going to arrow over, right arrow over, comma, player, HP, and notice, notice this, um, this comes up, this is really your friend too, you can click on that and it'll auto fill it for you, and it, it's a good way for you to know that you're kind of on the right track, that you're typing something that makes sense, uh, that it recognizes, in other words, something that's up here. If, uh, if it wasn't, like if I went like this, it'll be underlined in red because it doesn't know what it is. Okay, great. So uh, you know what else I want to do is I'm going to make a, a line down. So I'm going to go to the front of the sentence, but to the right of the quote, and I'm going to type a backslash. That's over the enter key, one backslash, and an N, and that'll print it down one line. All right, I'd like to show you this right now, but well, I can. Here, I'll show it to you. It's just going to run endlessly, though. It's going to be messy. So it's kind of uh, So I'm going to escape out of this by pressing Control-C. But that was good. We didn't have any errors. That's a, that's a nice thing. So let's, let's now print uh, some directions. So I'll print, and I'll tell them what to, what to type, you know. So I'm going to do another uh, line down, so backslash over the enter key, lowercase n, and I'm going to tell them to type W, S, A, or D to move. All right, uh, I like that. Um, and finally, to stop that from constantly scrolling, let's get their player input. So I'm going to call that choose call it move or something. I don't know. I'll call it choose. And that's going to equal input. I N, not I M. I see people put an M there a lot. Input. And notice it comes up. Input. Oops. And then in parentheses, since I already gave them instructions, I don't really have to write anything here. Um, but I want them to know that there's a cursor here. So I'm going to put a, a greater than sign and a space like that. I like that. I like the way that looks. Um, and you know what? I'm going to put that down the line as well. So I'm going to go over here and put a backslash n. All right. So let's run that real fast and see what that looks like. Great. So that's our basic screen. I can type here. When I do, it'll clear the screen and put me down here, and that's fine. So I have hit points, and I have my basic message. Awesome. So now our next step is to get the player's input and do something with it. So we're going to move across the screen in some way that makes sense. Um, using the W, S, uh, A, and D keys. So 
going to press enter here and come down a couple lines. And this is going to be pretty repetitive. So I'm going to say if choose equals equals, and in this case, w colon. So equals equals means does it equal that? It's a question. Does it equal that? Equals is assignment. So equals means this is that. Equals equals is a question. Does it equal that? Okay. So now um, we can just say location equals location. Oh, we don't even have to do that. We can say location. Uh, we're going to add, we're going to subtract 10 to it. So minus equals 10. All right, great. Let's run it again and see if that works. So if I hit W and press enter, it redraws up, and that's awesome. Oh, no. We can walk through walls, though. That's not good. Okay. So walking through walls is no good. So let's let's add one more if clause here. So we'll say if um, location um, minus 10. I think I can get away with this by putting the math right there. Oh wait, I gotta say maze. Maze location, right? Yeah, maze location minus 10 uh, equals equals hashtag colon and I'll press enter and I'll give them a message. I'll say message equals quote something like there's a wall there I'll tell them it hurts walking into walls excellent so there's a message and you know what I'm going to take their hit points player HP minus equals two. So I hurt them. <laughs> All right. And then uh, press enter to come down. So if that's true, that's what's going to happen. But I want to be over here in line with the if, because otherwise, else, colon, I want to uh, change the location. So two over. All right, let's try running that. Okay, so let's walk up. Great, it works fine. So that's great. So now we just need to do this for the other three directions. So let's do it for S because that's the opposite. Um, so I'm just going to highlight all this and I'm going to copy it. Control C and I'm going to copy it. And I'm going to press Enter come down and then backspace to them um, in line with the I in the outside if, the if where it says choose equals. And I'm going to press control V to paste and it didn't go in the right spot. Bam. Now it is. But this one's going to be an L if uh, because if it's not W, is it is it S? Okay, great. So this time I'm going to say S for down. And this time uh, as, as you may recall, S is straight down so that's 10 more so I'm going to change the minus to plus and minus to plus over here. Great. So now we should be able to go up and down. We can try that too if we want to. So if I go up, up and then down so we can go down. Great. So now again I'm going to go over here at the end of the line and press enter, come down a couple spaces, back in line with the uh, LF here. I'm going to paste it in again. Back that up. I'm going to say LF choose equals. Um, what should we do this time? I guess we'll choose A. Okay, so A is going to be minus 1. Because that's 1 to the left of the player. So that's just going to delete that 0. Delete that. And let's just keep on going. So I'll come to the end of the line here. Backspace to I'm in line with the E and the LF and uh, fix it. So there's where I paste it, control V, and I'll change this to LF. And finally, um, this will be D. And D is going to be plus 
one. So I'll delete that. Plus one. All right, so I know I went pretty fast there. Hopefully uh, I didn't leave you in the dust. Um, well, let's see what happens. So if I go up, draws nicely, can't walk through walls. Cool, so I can explore the map and it makes sense. Awesome. Okay, so the only other thing I want to do is what if you type something else? Like what if I type G, for example, and hit enter? Um, not, you don't get any feedback. But the other thing is it keeps this message. Watch, if I keep going up, um, if I go up, it keeps that old message even though I'm not walking in the walls. So let's clear out the message um, thing. Uh, and we should do that actually here. Right after we print the message, Let's set the message to be blank. So we'll say message equals nothing. So there, that's blank now. That should, that should be better. And the other thing I want to do is if they write something that's not uh, W, S, A, or D, I want to give them a message. So I'll say else, and this else colon. This else colon is in line with the E and L if. Press enter. And I'm just going to give them a, a new message, message equals, um, and I'll just say, I don't know, uh, make it W, A, S, and D are the only options. Spell only right. All right, cool. And then I'll press enter. And I also want to add to their hit points. But again, I don't want their hit points to go over the maximum. So I'm going to say if player oops, underscore HP is less than max HP colon, I'm going to add to their HP. So I'm just going to say player. HP plus equals, I don't know, what should we add to it? One, no point in that too much. Let's give it a shot, see what happens now. Okay, so no message, that's fine. I can walk up. And if I walk into a wall, it gives me the message. And then it goes away, and if I type something like X, nothing happens. Sweet, so there's my maze game. So we can, we can navigate through the maze, and that's kind of cool. Um, next time, we'll add the ability to w open and close doors and find and pick things up. That'll be our, our next change. So check out the next video, and we'll get that rolling.